froze. I was terrified. I asked the question, what will I do if the bully will hit me? How can I protect myself? What happens if the bully turns his rage fully on me? At least if I beg my way out, if I back down, maybe the bully will show me mercy. That's where Charles Atlas comes in. With his promise in just three months, I'll turn you into a fighting tower of muscle. What a deal, what an offer, wouldn't you accept that given those terms? If you're weak, if you're puny, if you're bursy, and the bully kicks sand in your face, and the bully takes everything away from you, and I mean the bully of the rhetoric, the bully that can talk, the bully that's stronger physically, has better presence, more credibility, and has the capacity because of physical size, and that alone, to intimidate and paralyze and compromise the will of the victim, the small short man in this case. I'm sounding out the alarm. It's a pandemic problem. You'll see it everywhere. Women, for the most part, respect strength, presence, posture, magnetism and dynamism, ability to chat them up effectively. That comes first. Why did I see in the neighborhood, just like Elliot Rogers in Isla Vista, I saw the bullies, the tough guys, the jock, the cool guy, the taller, more muscular, virile looking guys with a full head of hair, better features, stronger features. Take everything. And I complained, I said, man, this isn't right. This isn't right, this flies in the face of humanism. It flies in the face of the common good. It flies in the face of fairness. Until I learned, if there's fairness, if there's a common good, if there's justice, if there's equity, if there's parity, it's an individual thing, it's an individual struggle and battle. Period. Terry Cole Whitaker, Reverend Terry Cole Whitaker got it right when she says, if you're looking for a hand, the only hand you'll ever get at the end of your arm. If it's ever to be, it's up to me. If it gets done, I'm the one. Now I like to put it a little bit differently. I go along with Fritz Perls, hard gestalt. Get that man, get that small, tiny, pukey, puny little man who's so scared and says, what will I do if he'll hit me? If I assert myself to him, what will I do if he'll hit me? It'll be even worse. He'll put me in the hospital, bust me up good, and do it for, for fun. All he's trying to do is fire me up to do something physically and get an excuse to fuck me up real bad. That's what we're talking about here. That's what's at stake here. And short small man, if you assert yourself out there, you better know what you're doing. You better be able to throw chingasos, fists. You better have a powerful cobra to back up your chameleon, your showmanship, your rhetorical skills, your ability to bluff. It only goes so far. There's always somebody who's going to call that bluff. Don't try to survive on bluff. Don't try to survive on getting lucky, getting an even break. Don't try to survive on some bystander 
rescue you, entering the situation and making the quote-unquote wrong right. There is no wrong here. There is no right here. There's no truth. There's no falsehood. It's all in a continuum. That means if there's any modicum of any fantasy of justice or truth or fairness or level playing field, it's only on an individual basis. It's up to the individual to be well prepared. Put a lot of hard bark on you. This has to be earned out there. Drive iron. Drive iron. But do it in the right way. But don't just be a muscle head. A damn fool like I was. When you drive iron, you're doing it in the right way. You stretch, you're going for flexibility, coordination, and above all, brute functional strength in activity. You're not walking around with big, tight muscles that can't function, that don't have speed, that don't have coordination, that don't have core strength. And I believe and am convinced, indubitably, brute strength powerful, powerful grip is vital to survival. You have to know within yourself and have the security within yourself that if push comes to shove, you will be memorable. This need is above sexuality. Of course, it's not above hunger and breathing air and water. But it's above sexuality, it comes first, and it's called security with a big S. You have to feel safe within yourself when you go out there. You shouldn't have to ask yourself everything you do when you're walking around on eggshells around the bullies. And the bullies take many forms. Women can be bullies, by the way. Now... You won't have to walk around on eggshells because you have the security within yourself that if push comes to shove, you can throw chingasos. You can handle yourself and you will be memorable. And you have the presence, the power within yourself to project that into the bully's mind. Once the bully's convinced that he's got a lot to lose if he continues the confrontation, you'll be ready to deal and negotiate depending on what it is of course but recognize along with me everything you heard that right is a power struggle it reduces itself down to that I don't care how you look at it and mo that's why most of our conversation our social conversations are bullshit they're just past timing they're warm fuzzies. You stroke me and I stroke you. You be nice to me, I be good to you. I'll be nice to you. Let's never expose the real issues. Let's prostitute. Let's whore out the truth with a small t and use hyperbole. Excuse making exaggerations to promote and sustain our position. Power perceived is power achieved. You need the aura of dangerous strength and the ability to put on consequent quickly to survive. And I defy anybody to challenge these premises.